SC Manager with Michigan Department of Transportation, Kelby Wallace. Hi, Kelby. Good afternoon, Bart. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. You too. Starting to see uh, some major uh, um, growth on this uh, I-94 project. I was uh, traveling near the hotels on West Avenue 127, and you could start to see the concrete's been poured for what will be the divergent diamonds. You've got it. Yeah, well, you know, the, the concrete really, when that comes in, you really start to, it starts to come together. Um, the, all the young underground work takes forever and you don't really see everything happening. But I got a few pictures here that are, uh, this one's looking at uh, eastbound, uh, looking towards the west. That's kind of looking towards the, the Lowe's area there in front of Lowe's there, but that's the, the new concrete eastbound pavement there and, and then um, uh, peeling off on the left of the screen is a new ramp to uh, West Avenue that eventually will be there. So um, things are really starting to come together, especially when that concrete goes down and, and all the puzzle pieces start coming together. Uh, I threw this picture in there. This is our project that's not quite uh, uh, in our face as much. This is out from uh, M60 over to the Calhoun County line and, and most of the work over there is going on from Parma over to the county line and you can see here that the first part of this project is we're removing the uh, inside shoulder what we call the median shoulder there and we're going to pave that so we can shift traffic over and then we'll do paving on the rest of the roadway. So that that works not real exciting right now um, it doesn't have the new interchanges um, that we have here uh, at West Ave and Elm and stuff, but uh, a lot of work going over there on the west side of the county too. Yeah, in fact, uh, earlier this week you closed the Michigan Avenue 94 interchange completely in Parma. At Parma, yeah. yeah. So we, we talked with the uh, uh, local townships, police, fire, and some folks before that project, some of the business owners, and they were uh, more interested in us going in there closing it down completely and getting in and out as quick as we can. So we timed that to, to happen just about when school was out mm -hmm. and then it's gonna open up before school starts. So that was it. Otherwise we would have had to actually do that over two construction seasons. Oh, we wow. would kind of do it one half this year and then you do the other half next year. And so sometimes it's easier just kind of close it down and get it in and out. All right, now back to 94, 127. Yeah, so this is exactly what you just, just mentioned. This is looking north. So there you can see some of the hotels in the background and so that's the new um, eastbound exit ramp to West Avenue. You can start to see where traffic would uh, turn right, come right into the screen right at us. That, that would be to head south on West Avenue or to get on Boardman. And then the other direction would be um, to head north on uh, US 127 north there. So we're just about cl getting close to kind of switching traffic onto that new concrete pavement there. We'll put both all the traffic lanes over there on that and then we'll rebuild basically the right side of the screen there. Um, the closure, we actually have that ramp close to West Avenue right now, that eastbound exit ramp to West Avenue. Mm -hmm. Folks need to go down to Cooper, kind of turn around and come back to get there. Um, but that's uh, part of the actually uh, paving the rest of this ramp here to West Ave and then filling in the gap on uh, eastbound pavement there on 94. You can actually see a diamond pattern uh, in the middle of the new concrete. But the diamond, actually, that is the pattern of the traffic. Uh, and it's counterintuitive because people would actually be going, they'll be crossing over and they'll be on the left side of the road, right. like in England. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's a great description that I use to, to describe it, people. Um, as you come to this diverging diamond, you'll come up to a, a traffic signal. And then you'll kind of make a, a very slight, it's not a full left turn, you just kind of do a... Um, a uh, shift or you veer over into that opposite direction and then you'll go under the bridge and then you'll either uh, have a, a free flow turn to get onto the freeway mm -hmm. or you cross back through another traffic signal to kind of get back on um, the normal bound of the, the normal side of the roadway there. So um, based on everything, all the feedback, all the crash data, these are, are really, like you said, um, they're intuitive. When you get out there, you kind of just drive through it and you're like, wow, I just on the other side of the roadway and now I'm back and, and um, works very smoothly. You don't really have to think about it. Correct. Between uh, all the signing and we'll have special pavement markings to help people know that hey this is 127 north, this is 127 south lane, this is 94 east lane and stuff like that. So a lot of, a lot of signing and everything and you kind of just flow right through it. I think it'll be a welcome change. Yeah, because there are a lot of bottlenecks there, um, getting on and off the highway or getting onto Boardman and all of that. Yeah. 
quick picture just kind of of that bridge of that eastbound bridge over West Avenue. We just have a little piece of concrete there that uh, is probably filled in by now. These pictures are from a week ago, but uh, we were just uh, doing our, our what we call our bridge approach right there for that last piece, piece of concrete. Is it actually one or two bridges that are? are so there's two separate bridges, okay. one for uh, eastbound 94 over West Ave and then one for westbound 94. This one right here they're working on is eastbound because well, right now all the traffic is on the new westbound bridge. Right, so you actually built them before our very eyes. We didn't have to close that interchange Correct. at all. Correct. Yep. Um, this is kind of the last piece of earthwork on, on 94 between uh, Cooper and uh, Airport Road. Um, we're kind of finishing what we call here all of our sub-base work and our aggregate. And, and once that's uh, all been placed, then this will be kind of that last piece of big concrete that goes in there on the eastbound pavement before we put traffic back on the eastbound lanes. We're expecting that to happen probably in mid-July mm -hmm. is when all the traffic will be shifted. Yeah, on Saturday you uh, released a notice this morning uh, that you're going to be having a single lane closure between Airport Road and West Ave um, eastbound for uh, ramp paving. Correct. Yeah, worker safety and uh, motorist safety, just a kind of a short-term one, so they can kind of pave next to live traffic and not, uh, you know, dodge cars yeah. out there. Uh, jumping over here, we're at Elm Road. This, this picture, I think I had a, an earlier version last time I was here. You can really see that roundabout, and you can kind of see the new um, kind of dirt where, where that uh, new Elm Road is going to be. This is kind of a closer in picture. We're on the south side of 94 here. And, and that roundabout is actually, they're, I heard they're going to have our, our subcontractor next week to start doing some of this concrete paving around this roundabout mm -hmm. at Elm Road. No, it actually straightens out Elm Road. You really don't realize that it's, it's not at perpendicular to 94. Right. It's a bit of a bit of an angle. Yeah. That'll straighten out. Yeah, this is just a picture of the, the second roundabout on the north side of Elm. Um, they've got that all formed up, lots of formwork to make a big circular. Uh, pattern for that interior of that roundabout there. And these two roundabouts are going to kind of have the same decorative treatment that are at Cooper Street. Yeah, that looks great. All the, all the uh, uh, intersections, interchanges, bridges uh, throughout Jackson, it's really, uh, it, it's striking how much it improves just the overall impression of, wow, we're in Jackson. Yeah, we worked real hard with the county, the townships on Crete, and that, we call it a gateway, yeah. you know, kind of the gateway to the Jackson community. Uh, last picture, this is our Elm Road Bridge. We're just about done with that. You can see they've got some wood forms there where we're pouring the last of our decorative treatments. There's kind of a little tower that'll be in all four corners of that bridge to, to give it uh, you know, some of that decorative character that you're talking about. Looking great. And then jumping here, now I'm down to our railroad bridges in downtown Jackson. This is at uh, Jackson Street. These pictures, uh, they're not quite as exciting. It's just kind of a smaller confined mm -hmm. project. We're doing all the underground and, and retaining wall work. This is just a, a picture of the footing of the actual bridge that'll, that'll be constructed later. These are some retaining walls. This is on the north, northwest corner of uh, Jackson and the, in, uh, um, the railroad. Um, let's see how close we are to that building there. Um, this is uh, another picture of that wall. We've got these uh, pieces of rebar that stick through that wall into the earth to keep that wall, to keep it plumb, keep it straight up vertical so it doesn't tip over the years with any pressure from the railroad tracks and anything like that. And this is when we're jumping to Mechanic Street. It's just kind of a, a, a rough picture, blurry picture of some of the uh, a foundation work where we're going to put our footings that will actually hold the bridge. We've got um, um, piles that are going down into, into hard earth to support that bridge. So it's got a essentially a bigger it'll have a bigger uh base a bigger Is base it, because right now it's just Pretty there narrow. and it's going to be it's going to be like like that yep. and because you're not moving the tracks stay right where they right, are exactly where they are today because you can't have the train go correct <laughs> no trains don't do that very well right <laughs> not like cars um, that one, I'll just say right now, we're, we've been running into quite a few utility issues. So there's so many fiber optic lines either associated with, you know, the street below or the railroad tracks. It looks like we're probably going to have some uh, bridge work that goes into 2023. Uh, but we're actually working on a plan right now to make sure that, you know, roads are open and things are in good shape for the winter time. But uh, already we're projecting our schedule and, and it's going way past our, our weather limitations where we don't want to pour concrete in you know zero degree weather and, yeah. and, and compromise the, the life of a bridge 
uh, just to hurry up and rush it. So um, more to come on that. Uh, I'll have more news ne next time we talk, but um, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that, that project's going a little slower than we hoped. Any uh, supply chain issues for either of those projects? So um, we are seeing those all the time. Anything to do with steel mm -hmm. or any specialty products. Uh, the one project that's probably affecting us most is on our 127 bridges on the south side of town near the McDivitt area. Mm -hmm. So we had to, to really, we ran into some additional steel we need down there and the lead time is just crazy uh, with some of our fabricators just because of the, the demands and the pressure they're facing now. So that, that project is uh, slowing down a bit. We think we can make up time with that one, but yes, absolutely. Anytime we run into something that is a change in the field, we're, we're careful to see what time impacts it has. If it's a new piece of steel, concrete, plastic pipe, water main, all those items that are used throughout the country and the state, they definitely are, have a much, much longer lead time than we're used to. So we're careful to handle changes when we, when we run into them because we know we could run into our favorite Michigan winter yeah. weather and that really affects the project. So we're seeing it. Uh, it's almost, uh, you know, well, it's a chuckle that you, you've got these two bridge projects that are uh, located to uh, adjacent to two steel companies <laughs> it's like, and you can't get the steel yeah it's, yeah. it's uh, something we've never seen before well thanks for all the update and thanks to uh, everyone that's working so hard uh, on this project on these projects yeah, good well, to see you we appreciate it thanks Kelby Wallace Jackson TSC manager with MDOT here with us on JTV more to come in